Wow, I can't believe that took so little time with AI. Hello, hello, and welcome to AI Plus More, your ultimate source for all things AI related and beyond. In this exciting video tutorial, we're diving to the cutting edge world of AI with a focus on SDXL 1.0, the latest release from Stability AI. SDXL or Stable Diffusion XL is a powerful generative model that takes image refreshment to a whole new level. Join us as we walk through the step-by-step -step process of installing and using SDXL 1.0. Whether you're a seasoned AI enthusiast or just getting started, this tutorial will provide you with the tools you need to harness the full potential of SDXL. Let's go over some quick system requirements first. Uh, your PC should run Windows 10 or higher with a discrete NVIDIA video card, as in GPU, with over 4 gigabytes of VRAM or more. An integrated GPU will not work. If your PC does not meet these requirements, some alternatives are a cloud service like Google Collab or Mac Apple Silicon like M1, M2, that would be even better. Step 1. Install Python. You will need Python 3.10.6, don't use Python 3.11 or newer. There are two ways to install Python on Windows. Option one is to install it from the Microsoft Store. Option two would be use the 64-bit Windows installer provided by the Python website. If you use this option, make sure to select Add Python 3.10 to the path. Before you do this, remove all Python versions you have previously installed. You can do that in control panel and then add or remove programs. Visit 3.10 on Microsoft Store and install the Python software. This step is most likely to go wrong. Let's do a check. Press the Windows key on your keyboard and type CMD to find a program called Command Prompt. Open the Command Prompt app. You should see a black terminal like you're a hacker. Type Python and then press enter. You should see it prints out Python 3.10. This tells you your Python is installed correctly. Now you can close the command prompt app. Don't proceed to the next step until Python 3.10 installed correctly. If you don't see Python 3.10 running, try restarting the PC, removing all the previous versions of Python and reinstalling from the Microsoft Store. Or if the one from the Microsoft Store doesn't work for you, remove it and try the one on the Python website. Step two, install Git. Git is a code repository management system. You will need it to install and update Automatic 11.11. You can download the Windows version. You open the installer, click install to accept the license and install the software. Follow the instructions to complete installation. Let's just go over that. Okay, now that we have installed the prerequisites for Automatic 11.11 and Stable Diffusion, we can go back to the install instructions. It's this link right here at the top. You can find anything that you want when you're in GitHub. You can press the code button and find the link there. You can open your Explorer window and create a folder wherever you want your Stable Diffusion to be. You can also open a command prompt from your start menu, then you won't be in this directory. Here you're going to copy paste the git clone text. Git, as we said, is a program that we installed. Clone will copy the files to your computer. Then you press enter, and now your files are being copied to your computer. After just a few seconds, Automatic 11.11 is now on your computer. Okay, since you have Git, and you also have Python, and now you have Automatic 11.11, we can go ahead and install Stable Diffusion XL. Once you open the next link in the description, you're going to see a lot of options. It gets a little bit confusing, but you just click on files and versions. Once you're over here, scroll down a little bit and download this model over here. They're heavy in size, so just click the installation button. It'll then install on your web browser. Then we'll move on and do the exact same thing for the refiner model. To avoid any confusions, let me clarify. You might see that I'm not downloading the LoRa model. That's because the LoRa comes built in with every new version of Automatic 11.11. If it didn't come with yours, make sure you have the latest version. Now, what you want to do next is go onto the Stable Diffusion Web UI. 
Now, this is by Automatic 1111, and this is going to be used to have the operation of this model on your web UI. And what you wanna do is scroll down a little bit and click on the installation and running tab. It'll take you to this page, which will showcase the links that you'll be using to install web UI. So what you wanna do is install the zip folder. Once this is complete, let's get to the next step. Now, what you wanna do is click on the web UI folder, click on models, and then click on stable diffusion. And what you wanna do is copy and paste with two model cards that you just recently installed you want to paste them both over here. This is going to take just a little bit longer since both of the model cars are around seven gigabytes. Now that we finish copying over that, what you can do is go onto the files that you just extracted. First, click on the updated .bat file. It is going to take a couple of seconds for you to start initializing. So once it is done, you can just click enter or click any key and then it'll be operational. Secondly, you just wanna do the same thing to the run.bat and it's going to start installing a couple of things. The update file is used to update any of the different types of requirements that are needed to install it. LoRa is a training technique used to refine stable diffusion models. It is a small model that applies minor changes to standard model tech points. LoRa models typically weigh between two and 200 megabytes. When you run the base model followed by the refiner model, the base model sets the global composition, a version that is very low res, around 100 pixels. And the refiner model adds the details. It can get you upwards of 1,000 pixels. The base model is trained on time steps and the refiner is, is fine-tuned from the base model. So they have to be used in combination. What we can see here is the size. This is the update that came with. Now you can do 1024 by 1024, which you couldn't do with the previous update. Up here at the top on the left, you can change the model. You can do base or base plus refiner. You could do image to image on the second tab and you can train the model right over here. So this is a prompt example that I copied from the SDXL website. This is what you get with the base model. You can see it's really good quality, but check out when we do it with the refiner. That's a lot more detailed. Now changing up the seed value, this is what you get on the base model, which everyone would say is pretty good, but check out when we turn on refiner as well. You should also play around with negative prompts. If you have a prompt saying a fast food restaurant on the moon, you can do the negative prompt disfigured, ugly, bad. This is what you get with the base model, and this is what you get with the base slash refiner. You can see the shadows are a lot better. Everything is more detailed. And of course, you can use artists to inspire yourself. We have the prompt Painting of a Beautiful City by Brad Rigney. This is the result from the base, and this is the result from the base and the refiner. We will write something along the lines of family of aliens as tourists taking pictures at Machu Picchu, realistic, 8K octane, unreal engine. And then for the negative prompts, text box will write in the form. And then we wait just a little bit. And this is the image we get, and you wonder what happened. What happened is that this model works with other dimensions. So you, I think the default is 124 by 124 pixels, which is a square image, but you can change that to landscape or portrait. This is another example that it came out with those same parameters. If we add a few more negative prompts, uh, this is what it comes out with. Those negative prompts are mishappen, bad shape, bad art, and glitch. Here's some variations of the same prompt. Green for aliens as tourists taking pictures with Polaroid at Machu Picchu and the same negative prompts. And then another one with green alien taking a selfie as tourists at Machu Picchu. You can see that it has the phone in its hand, but it's also taking the selfie. You also can do a portrait of a woman in the Second World War scenario. With the same negative prompts, this is the first result after a few minutes. With this same positive prompts, you can also add zombie style, and this is what it comes up with. 
You can also add porcelain sculpture and this is what it comes up with. Here's another one, Peruvian model girl in the space, dreamy style. And here's a few more examples. The amount of time this takes is just going to depend on the type of GPU that you have. And as we wrap up this tutorial, reflect on your journey through the world of SDXL. Celebrate your newfound knowledge and skills as you look ahead to the future of AI and exciting developments that await. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey into the realm of AI and SDXL 1.0. Until next time, keep exploring, learning, and expanding your horizons with AI and beyond.